Documenting birds with photographs is a critical part of modern birding. Here I'll explain the basics of birding photography. Not bird photography, birding photography. There's a big difference and I'll explain. A bird sighting that includes a documenting photograph is much more valuable, both scientifically and as information for other birders than a bird sighting without a photograph. For this reason, many birders now carry a camera to document their sightings. They're what I'm going to call in this video, birding photographers. At the same time, bird photography as its own activity is becoming more and more popular. And I think it's important to understand that the goals of bird photography and the goals of birding photography can be quite distinct. Bird photography is all about the quality of the image. Bird photographers want sharp, beautiful, interesting images of birds. Bird photography is, is art. Uh, and you don't have to be a birder to be a, a, an active and excellent bird photographer. You have to be a good artist. Uh, and most bird photographers are really proficient with using a camera. We, as I'll point out, uh, birding photographers, uh, you don't have to get into it quite as much as a bird photographer. Now I worked for a few years trying to become a decent bird photographer and I didn't quite get there. I'm, I'm a mediocre bird photographer. But during those years, um, by necessity, I became a much less active birder. When I was out at the places where there was a potential for uh, getting a lot of birds on my list or finding new uh, county or state birds or what have you, I really wasn't doing that. I was, uh, I was composing my pictures and working on my, uh, the art of, of birds. For most bird photographers, and this was true for me, a common bird offering uh, a chance for a great picture, great being interesting, uh, light just right, uh, composition being excellent, is of way more interest than an unusual bird, than a bird that shouldn't be there, a bird that's new on the county list, birds new on the state list. That's birding. Bird photography is not that. So the goal of birding photography in contrast, and this is, this is what we're gonna focus on in this video, is all about documenting the identity of a bird. The birder wants to get the key field marks in the picture. The beauty of the image, the, the artistic value of the image is, is really a non-factor. It's about ID. So we're gonna talk about how to get that to work. How as a birder, you can carry a camera and become quite successful at documenting birds um, that you encounter. This video is about documenting rare birds with a camera. So first and foremost, you need a decent camera to consistently document the rare birds that you find. The birds that need documenting will tend to be small birds moving around in trees or bushes or birds way out on a lake or on a coast or birds that you only uh, get a chance to look at or photograph as they fly by. A cell phone is nearly useless for birding photography. I've almost never seen an acceptable uh, documentary photograph of a rare bird taken with a cell phone. And I've been presented with a lot of terrible cell phone pictures where people wanted to know what the bird was. Cell phone cameras are made for portraits of objects up close like people and for landscapes. They're not good for small distant objects like birds, even if you try to zoom in uh, with the camera. Now, a big exception to everything I just said is connecting your cell phone to a spotting scope. That's an entirely different proposition than just using uh, your cell phone to take pictures. And I've seen tremendous uh, documentary photographs of rare birds, as well as just bird photography uh, done with the, the uh, phone scope combination. This is called digiscoping. And I'll do a whole separate uh, video on uh, digiscoping because it's a, it's a key tool that some birders use um, and it's good to know about it. 
But in my opinion, digiscoping is not a good solution for general bird documentation. It generally doesn't work for flying birds, unless you're way more coordinated and quick than I am with that equipment. And it, it doesn't work at all for birds moving around in bushes and trees, at least in my experience. It's really a specialty form of uh, bird photography that can be really useful for um, uh, birds way out. Here I'm describing a basic approach uh, to, to bird photography. Now to be fully prepared to document basically any bird that you encounter uh, in, in your birding activities, dense cover, far away, whatever, I recommend getting a digital SLR camera and a telephoto lens. Now I've used Canon products for the last 15 years. And so the, the equipment I'm gonna show in this demo is just my personal equipment, which is all uh, uh, Canon products. But I'm not endorsing Canon in any way. I'll say it works great, but from everything I've read, Nikon is at least the equivalent uh, of Canon. This is, I'm gonna show Canon, Nikon, Olympus, any of that can work. And I'm also gonna show you Canon brand lenses because that's what I've got, but there are lots of alternative brand lenses also uh, like Sigma uh, is, a, is a major no name brand, but of course now it's got its own uh, brand, but they're cheaper than, than Canon uh, uh, products. Now you should be aware and I'm not gonna go into great detail on the equipment because there's so many uh, reviews out there, but the, the brand have uh, specific attachments that you can't go between. So you can't buy a Nikon lens and easily use it on a Canon camera. So this is why it's kind of a big deal to decide if you're gonna be a Canon user or a Nikon user, because once you invest in some lenses and stuff, there's really no going back. Now the system that I've used for years is a fairly high end SLR body and a 100 to 400 millimeter telephoto lens. And I just switched from really my original SLR body, the, uh, uh, the Canon 7D, which was, which was 10 years old now, maybe more than 10 years old, 12 years old. Um, and that's just been a workhorse for me. Uh, it, it, it didn't, didn't fail. I just uh, decided to upgrade. So I've just recently upgraded to the Canon 7D Mark II, which actually is not the newest Canon, uh, but various ratings say it's as good as the newest ones. Um, and, and so, and I've been very pleased uh, with this new camera and I'll explain why I upgraded as I go through this, as I talk about what you want out of a camera. Now I'll just say that th I understand for a lot of people, this is an enormous uh, monetary investment and you may think it's out of your range. You just can't do this, but it maybe you can't do it, but if you've got access to modest amounts of funds to invest in your birding activities, I imagine you can do this. And, and the way you make this very affordable is you don't go and buy the absolute latest, just out top, top of the line brand of say Canon camera. Canon just came out with a new camera, uh, not their absolute top fleet, but the one that a lot of birders are buying now and it's like $3,200 for the body. I understand that's a lot of money, but you know what? If you go back to the Canon 7D Mark II, which is the one I just bought, which has been out for five or, or six years or so, it's $1,300 and it's an absolute top end camera. So half the price, less than half the price. And then if you went back and bought a, a Canon 7D and I'll tell you, they are darn nice cameras. They'll do everything you need to do. That's now a 12 year old camera you can get a Canon 7D, a used Canon 7D, I bet you can get for a couple hundred dollars because nobody wants the old stuff. It's like buying an older cell phone, it's way cheaper. And same with lenses. You could get yourself set up, I'm quite sure, I haven't actually priced this, but I'm quite sure you could get yourself set up with a really fine setup for documenting uh, uh, birds for, for well under $500. It's gonna be used equipment, but it'll be fully functional equipment. And, and you, you get yourself completely into the game uh, with those cameras. And by the way, if you like to go back and forth between bird photography and birding photography, you can take fine uh, uh, portrait quality photographs with the Canon 7D and a 
and say a U sigma lens. Okay, let's think about the key elements for birding photography that you want out of your camera. Above all else, uh, without a doubt, is you want a camera that uh, does quick and accurate focus. There's nothing more frustrating than to have a rare bird that you need to document right in front of you and for your camera to not quickly or accurately focus on the image. And this is uh, it's a very challenging for, for the camera, especially a moving object. Um, and cameras have gotten better and better at this. This was my biggest gripe with my old 7D. It just didn't focus fast. And I missed a lot of shots of key birds because of that. It, it really, uh, for all the beautiful images that camera gave me, it, it made me just curse it a lot and, and, and not like it. The new uh, 7D Mark II is much, much better at, uh, at finding, quickly finding the, the focus uh, on a bird. And as a matter of fact, that's exactly why I didn't uh, splurge and get the more expensive, newer uh, camera. All of the, uh, the reviews I read about the 70 Mark II said it's, it, it's, it, there's no difference in the responsiveness between that camera and the next camera up. It was about megapixels and stuff I wasn't as worried about. And, but the, the focal responsiveness is excellent on that camera. And so every camera is reviewed. And that topic is, is in every review of every camera you might think about purchasing. So listen to what the camera experts say about that. It, so when that's with, with reviews, but if you get to try a camera, if you're buying a used camera and you get to actually uh, even use it for a few minutes, that's what you should check. How fast can I, can I uh, get a focus on a bird in a bush, turkey vulture flying overhead or what have you? How, what does it do with that? And, and if that will make you a big difference in, in how enjoyable your birding photography is, enjoyable versus frustrating. Um, now, second, you're gonna have to have uh, some magnification. You're gonna need a telephoto lens. And I recommend getting at least seven uh, power magnification. The same that you have is, is the sort of the, the lowest uh, acceptable magnification in binoculars. It gets you a look at birds as you're walking around. It, it will give you an image that's decent enough to blow up and get an identification from. Um, so you get a good approximation of how much in lens is magnifying if you divide the focal length by 50. The focal length is that number you always hear, like 100 to 400 millimeter lens. So if I divide the bigger number, 400, that's the ma maximum magnification of that lens by 50, that's about an eight times magnification by that lens. And uh, that about 400 millimeters and eight times magnification is about as much as you can get with a, a portable lens, with a lens that's not uh, on a tripod. And, and I'll talk about tripods in a second. Um, so that, that's just, that's it, that's your equipment. You need a decent camera body, quick focus, uh, and you need uh, a, a reasonable amount of magnification. Uh, you're gonna need 300 to 400 millimeter uh, lens to, to do, you, you know, you can do some stuff with a lesser magnification, but I'm talking about general, you put this on your shoulder, carry it around and you're ready to document almost any bird uh, you run into. Okay, that's enough talk about equipment. Let's go birdie. Well, let's let's talk about what you'll do uh, when you go birdie. Okay, this is my standard setup uh, when I'm out birding, uh, except if I am at a spot uh, where I need a spotting scope, I'll carry a spotting scope on my shoulder. Okay, so this is, I carry the camera to my side, binoculars obviously up front, and, and, and my scope. Okay. So let's say you've just been birding with binoculars, binoculars and scope, and you're gonna add a camera. What are some of the things that you wanna to know to be successful at, at getting pictures of the, the birds you wanna document? Well, there's five key points that I wish I'd known uh, when I started birding. The first is skip the tripod. And I'll come back to each of these. Let me just go through the list first. Keep your camera ready. Don't wait to take the picture. Use time priority 
take a lot of pictures. Okay, let's start with tripods. Okay, I'm basically in the setup I was a second ago, except now I've taken my scope off my tripod and I've added my, uh, my camera. This is a mistake. Okay, and this is a place where birding photography and bird photography really deviate. For bird photography, absolutely use a tripod. The difference between really good wildlife photographs and, and mediocre wildlife photographs is, tends to be a tripod. You really need image stabilization if you want very sharp images and you want a tripod. But we're talking about birding photography. We're talking about birding and being able to take pictures of birds while you're birding. This is, this is cumbersome. This will reduce your list of birds substantially. Uh, you're walking along, there's some wetlands and some places where you might need a scope, mud flats, but there's, there's birds in the bushes as well. Well, you've given up your scope because you can't carry both and you're way slowed down. If you see an interesting bird, yellow bird pops up, you've got to put down your tripod with your camera and then get your binoculars and that's a lost bird. You won't get pictures that much better for documentation with a tripod and you're just way better off without the tripod. So for birding photography, skip the tripod. Key point number two, don't wait to take the picture. This sounds like, well, duh, but I'll tell you, um, you, you're in the field, you, you spot a bird, and you, you know what it is, and you really want to document this thing. It's not in a perfect position, though. It's got a branch in front of it, whatever. You're going to take a few steps over and get a perfect view of that bird. Take that bad picture first. Take the picture with the stick in front of it. I just can't tell you how many times I've paused for whatever reason, not close enough, sticks in the way, don't think I have a good angle, and then the bird flies off and you get no more chances at a picture. So always take the first picture. Take any chance you have to take a picture, take it. Put pictures in the bank, then work for the better picture until finally you got so many good pictures, you're sick of photographing that bird. But don't wait to take that first picture. Very important to keep your camera ready. And again, I, I'm a lazy person. And I, and I tend to be a person that doesn't pay enough attention at all moments in life. And so many times, I well, I tend to leave my camera in the car too much, to be honest with you. I should have put that on the list. Take your camera with you. That's really lazy. But anyway, uh, assuming you got your equipment with you, you you've, you've gotten out of the car. And this is especially in the winter where everything's bulky. Got really nice here lately. I can't really do this in a coat. Uh, but you got out of the car. You put all your stuff on. And... You're not really paying attention, all of a sudden there's the good bird, you know? Well, if your camera's over your shoulder, around your back, and under your binoculars, it is, a, it is an effort. And actually with coats, it's even worse. It gets stuck. You can't get it up and around, and the, the cords get tangled, and you can't get your camera up. Right from the beginning, you got to remember to keep your camera ready. Now, sometimes if you're doing longer walks, you do it to put your camera behind you just so it doesn't bang so much. But if you're in a place where there's going to be bird action, just keep it out. Keep it ready. And it can be under your binocular straps, but you got to be ready to pick up that camera and use it. Uh, almost like a hunter uh, and a gun. So keep your camera ready. I've made that mistake. I uh, can't tell you how many times. We're not going to go into great detail on your camera settings. There's some fantastic YouTube tutorials on camera settings, mostly for bird photographers, but it's useful to learn how to best set your camera. For a birding photography, I'll tell you, the, the thing I, I would recommend is set your camera on time priority. There's a button on top of your camera that has a, a, a you could pick your setting from full auto. The camera does absolutely everything. You really don't want that. It'll choose some bad stuff for bird photography. Put it on the TV uh, button, time priority and set the time pretty high uh, if you've got any sort of light at all do about one five hundredth of a second if you're really in low light conditions go don't go down below uh, uh, about one two hundredth of a second your pictures will be too blurry you're hand holding your camera and and if you've got light like I'm standing here it's mixed Sun you can see I'm fading in into shadow and, and Sun but 
in a bright day like this, I put it on one two thousandth of a second. And then what's really nice about the, the this camera and a lot of the cameras you may be buying, uh, you can put it on uh, auto ISO. That's this we used to be the speed of your film. Now it's how pixelated your image is. Uh, the camera will pick the ISO, and that's great because that used to really be a problem for me. So I've been walking around lately shooting always at one five hundredth of a second, often at one one two thousandth, even one one three thousandth of a second, getting really sharp handheld pictures. So if you don't want to know very much more about how a camera operates, put it on time priority and set that number, that one over number, as high as you can. Because then the camera shake will be, will be taken care of by the shutter speed. Okay, I would recommend that you take a lot of pictures. And I tend to be picture stingy. I grew up in the age of film where you got 36 pictures and I just, it's, it's hard for me to get out of that old mentality. Also, I tend to keep way too many pictures. So I, I fill up uh, every memory, but take a lot of pictures. In other words, you got a bird in front of you, shoot away. Uh, it's gonna be blinking and moving its head in bad positions. Uh, if you shoot a lot of pictures, one of them will be good. And you could just throw away, throw away hundreds of pictures that aren't, that aren't as good as the one you're gonna keep. I just made this mistake this weekend. A uh, pair of sandhill cranes right in front of me. One was doing courtship and dancing. And I took just like five pictures and I missed all the good poses. If I'd shot a hundred, a, a big a series of a hundred pictures, I would have had way better pictures of courting sandhill cranes. Now that's really bird photography, not birding photography. But the same thing will happen. You'll miss the field mark. You'll miss the, the wing pattern. You'll miss the tail pattern because you didn't shoot through the whole sequence of movement of the bird. So shoot a lot of pictures. Now, I don't want to put too much in, in one episode. Uh, uh, bird photography, where most of this information um, is filed, is a huge topic. And you, there are literally thousands of really good YouTube videos on how to do this or that. I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible here. Uh, and the next stage of this whole thing is, is photo processing, which can be quite a complicated uh, endeavor with, a, with a, a lot to learn. But but I'm gonna recommend doing just minimal photo processing to get your birds posted to the, to the birding community. It is really important to do minimal photo uh, uh, processing. Uh, and the, the, probably the most critical thing that you need to do with your photographs is uh, crop them, blow up the, 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 what's probably a small image uh, in your photograph. No one likes a where's Waldo search where the supposed documentation of the bird is an image where you can't find the bird. So do that much work for your fellow birders. Zoom in on the, the bird in your picture and crop that as, as much as is uh, reasonable. Uh, and then the other thing that you, so that's the, probably the most important thing is zooming in on your image and cropping out uh, the bird. The second thing, is to uh, maybe adjust the brightness. Now cameras are really good at taking a picture at appropriate brightness, so you may not need to adjust it. But if it's really a dark picture, it's a simple uh, matter to brighten it up, to add more light to your picture. Or if it's way overshot, if it's way too bright, you can move the brightness down and maybe make your bird appear uh, with field marks uh, better. Now, the Photo editors that are built into your computer can do these minimal edits. If, like on my Macintosh, there's a built-in photo editing program called Preview, it's sort of basic functions. It, it could do these things. Uh, Windows computers, there's another system. I don't know what it is, but it's equivalent and you can do it this way. And you could just do this. You never really have to learn more, but I'll tell you, you there's a lot more you can learn. And there's uh, professional packages for photo processing uh, that you can learn about. I'm not going to me even mention them here, but there is a lot of information on the internet. Now, I agree, it's overwhelming amount. So that's why I'm starting out simple. Minimal processing, just blow up your image and make sure it's, it's not either way too dark or way too bright to see. Then post it. That's all, really all you need to do. So that's really it. It really isn't that hard. You've got a picture on your camera. Um, you're going to want to do enough processing so it's not a Where's Waldo search and it's not too dark or too bright, and that's it.
you you got your documentation of your bird picture. Now, one challenge is getting your picture from your camera to your uh, eBird list or to Facebook. And this is this can become a format for people to exchange ideas. I'd like to hear if people have better ways to do this, but basically. I can't do that instantaneously. I can't do that in the field. I, I get done with my day's birding, get home. I take the camera out of the card and I've got an adapter to connect to my computer. And again, you can, this is outside the realm of just a birding photography video. You can find out how to do all of this kind of stuff, basic uh, camera use. And you, you get your pictures onto your computer. And once your pictures are on your computer, that's where you would process them. And then that's where you can just drag and drop them into eBird. And eBird has a lot of uh, uh, information about how to get both sounds and video and images onto uh, the, your eBird list. So unfortunately, it's a few hours between the end of your bird watching day and getting your images attached, but, but that's okay. That's just the way it is. Okay, that's it. That's uh, how to add photography uh, to your birding activities. So uh, I hope you find this enjoyable. I hope you think about adding photography as an element to your birding. I think it does make it more fun. If you like this series and, and you're finding it uh, informative and entertaining, think about uh, clicking the like button uh, on this page and, and maybe subscribing to the channel. Okay, get out there with your cameras and see some birds. Uh -huh.